So welcome everyone uh, to our annual planning meeting. It's gonna be a little different from last year. Um, I will go over, you know, what, what we've done over the past year and a little bit from the previous years and um, we'll just, you know, have a discussion. So a pretty, you know, casual meeting, feel free to chime in um, uh, whenever you um, have any questions or comments. So I'm going to share my screen. Give me just a moment. All right, can everyone see that? Great. Okay, so we all know each other, so I don't need to do too many introductions. Um, Liz Morris, the president. Um, um, you all wanna introduce yourself as well, I guess, just in case anyone's watching the recording. I'm Donna Hughes, treasurer. Oh, I didn't know it was on you. Sorry. Uh, Ashley Goodrich, Vice President. And Christian Goodrich, uh, Chair of the Zoning and Development Committee. Becca Kravitz, Resident. I'm Atticus, uh, Area Commissioner for District 2 with the Southside Area Commission. All right. Um, so today's outcomes, I guess, will be just a review of 2020 and discussion on 2020 and the 2021 calendar. Um, so our year in review, um, this past year, um, last year at this planning meeting, we uh, talked a lot about forming. Liz, you're frozen. She did say she was worried about their internet connection dropping. Yeah. It's just a matter of time before it rolls through the whole neighborhood. Well, at least we didn't get kicked out. Ashley, is that a Deathly Hallows tattoo? It is indeed. Um, I've always been a huge Potterhead ever since my third grade teacher read us the first book, so. <laughs> Love it. I am also a huge Harry Potter fan. I can't think of the number of times we read those books. I definitely had a couple that fell apart because I read them so much. <laughs> That's awesome. Welcome back. Sorry guys, uh, I'm not 100% sure how the internet would do here. Um, 
what was the last where where did I get cut off uh what the plan what you did at the last planning meeting right yeah that one right at the very beginning okay I'm going to I'm going to stop my video I don't know in hopes that maybe that will help with the internet connection and uh, I just wanted to say I by hi everyone I, I have a zoning committee meeting I have to be on so I just want to say good to see all of you I am bye okay so um i think i was saying the audit the nominations and the planning and development committees are defined in our bylaws and then the other committees we we formed um to address kind of the the things we wanted to work on in 2020. um uh, this past year um donna hughes joined our executive board as our treasurer our um, previous treasurer, Kat, uh, moved out of the neighborhood. Um, and so we're really grateful for Donna stepping up into that role. Um, we obviously had to adjust to our new reality with uh, COVID-19 and move to virtual meetings and um, virtual meetings or socially distanced events. Um, we did hold the we did still hold our garden tour um, and we actually more than doubled our resident participation compared to uh, in 2019. Um, and that's largely due to in 2019, we partnered with Ganther's Place and the majority of the garden tour stops were in Ganther's Place. And so this year we did not partner with Ganther's Place and all of our stops were in Southern Orchards. Uh, we also held our first virtual night out for safety and liberation event. Um, and then to kind of dive into that a little bit more detailed, um, we held this past year three in-person monthly meetings, uh, January, February, March, and then we started our virtual meetings um, Liz, we lost you again. Gone, gone again. <laughs> Hey guys, sorry, I'm on my phone now. Um, can you all hear me okay? Yep. Okay, I'm... Do you want to share the presentation with one of us and we can screen share and you can still go through it? Yeah, that might be the best thing to do. Um, I think. I know Ashley and Christian, you guys are and Donna, you're all would definitely have access to it. Are you able to pull? up the presentation at all uh yeah let me it's, see it's in the drive under annual planning
I'll let Ashley um, have the honors of pulling that up. I'm looking for it right now. Okay, it's 2021 SOCA meeting, or no, sorry, uh, 2021 planning meeting, and it's a presentation. Off. Sorry, I found it, but uh, it looks like there's a, a fire down the street. Oh, <laughs> oh no. So, um, okay. Uh, where is the Okay. All right, this is where we left off, right? The monthly meetings? Yeah. Okay. okay. Uh, feel free to take it away. <laughs> Thanks. Okay. So um, these are some of the represent or yeah, um, organizations that we had speak at our monthly meetings. Um, um, and the list is a little bit um, smaller than last year, you know, because we didn't have as many meetings and then um, adjusting to our virtual setup um, took some time. So we can, um, and then the next slide. Um, these are a list of the zoning variances and demolitions we had this year. Um, so we really only had two zoning variances um, that I found looking through the meeting or the meeting agendas, and that was 680 Parsons Avenue, which was a parking lot owned by Nationwide Children's Hospital and then utilized uh, by East Public, and then 641 East Casa Street, which we all we just, we just had at our November meeting. Um, and then the only demo we had received this year was at 655 Ann Street. And this was a single family home purchased by Nationwide Children's Hospital. I believe the, um, the resident had passed away and uh, Nationwide Children's had acquired that um, property, which was, um, next to their uh, parking lot um, of their prop their properties off of Livingston Avenue. Are there any questions about um, the meetings or the zoning? Okay, so uh, moving on to our annual events. Um, this past year, uh, we canceled our annual egg hunt uh, due to COVID. Um, we had also planned to do a new event, which was like a civic open house where um, we discussed having like a potluck outside um, where we just invited any residents, you know, to come and engage with the civic association members. Um, which also did not happen due to COVID. Um, we did hold, uh, as I mentioned earlier, our annual garden tour. Um, and then for the night out event um, was postponed from August to October. And we went virtual um, holding a night out for safety and liberation event online. Um, and then um, we did um, help promote the trick or, a trick or treat map in October though we didn't hold the normal event, you know, where we might have like a location where, where we set up and do activities like face painting or, um, you know, handing out costumes and stuff like that. Um, and then the next slide um, were 
the you know partner events where we participated or had planned to participate in events. Um, we did participate in the House Suite It Is event that Ganther's Place put together in February, and that was located at Parsons North. Um, that's an event where um, Ganther's Place invites different organizations to have tables with information at, and it has a Valentine's Day theme and um, with, you know, sweet treats and, um, and it's, uh, a lot of fun. It was a really great event. Um, so we were glad to participate in that. Uh, we ended up not doing the Litter League. Um, Litter League was canceled by Keep Columbus Beautiful. And um, we had also planned to participate in the Avenue for All event by CD4AP. Um, they, you know, canceled the normal event due to COVID. Um, I think they did some sort of virtual engagement, but uh, we did not participate in that. Um, this month, typically we would, we have a resident, Mike, who puts together a holiday, like hot chocolate donut and coat, uh, giveaway. And, um, this year he's not doing that due to COVID. And then the Casa Street Garden, um, I believe they did cancel their Earth Day as well as their harvest event, which were the two, um, you know, big annual events that we typically would, you know, participate in. Um, and then they did kind of some ad hoc events um, where I know different members of the Civic Association may have participated, but as a, you know, as a Civic Association, we didn't set up a table or do anything specifically for those events. Um, so any questions about events for 2020? Okay, so uh, the next slide, I just listed some different projects we've done over the past couple of years. Um, so this year, uh, we did do the Nationwide Children's Hospital Spring Beautification Project. Um, that's a project each year where Nationwide Children's, um, in the past years, they would donate flats of flowers and mulch. Um, this year, they, because of COVID, they just gave out gift cards and then, um, the organizations receiving the gift cards were responsible to, to purchase the, you know, flowers and mulch for their projects. Uh, typically, we um, we do the Linwood traffic circles, um, and then we've also donated flowers to the Casa Street Garden. Um, in 2018, we added Kobacher Park onto that, and we planted some flowers there. Um, we'd since decided not to do Kobacher Park just because we couldn't um, maintain the flowers in that location. Um, we didn't really have any um, successful method to water them so that they could be maintained. Um, but the Linwood traffic circles in the past have been maintained by um, a resident and civic member um, who lived on Linwood Avenue. Um, and then in 2020, we also focused on forming committees. Um, and so I'd listed, I, you know, mentioned those committees earlier and uh, they're listed there again. Um, and then in the past two years, in 2019, in addition to the beautification, we also um, did like monthly litter cleanups, um, focusing out of uh, Kobacher Park. And then in 2018, uh, you might remember several of us attended a uh, lender, litter index training by Keep Columbus Beautiful. And then we also did monthly litter cleanups in that year we did them out of Martin Park. Um, in addition, in 2018, we did receive a Columbus Neighborhood Community Grant. Um, and I wanna say we used that for the um, night out event. And then we also um, worked on safe routes to school and um, we had our permit, um, the permit parking zone created that year as well. Are there any questions about um, these different projects that we've done this past year or the previous years?
All right, um, the next slide is uh, civic association structure. Um, so our bylaws define uh, four executive board positions, president, a VP, secretary, and treasurer. Um, and then, um, as I mentioned before, the bylaws define the audit, nomination, planning and development committee. And then we decided to create the outreach and membership and then the bylaws and constitution committees. Any questions about those? Um, then the next slide talks about monthly meetings. Um, just so you can kind of see, um, this year we didn't have too many zoning variances. In 2019, uh, we had a few more. And you know, 2018, we also only had about three. And then these are some presentation topics we've had over the last three years. So any questions about, about that, about the monthly meetings? All right, the next slide is um, our mission statement. Um, we will unite and preserve our community through partnerships and foster civic engagement with, sorry, civic involvement with monthly engagements. Um, and then the next slide, um, last year we talked about what values we wanted to uphold at the Civic Association. And um, these were the values that we wanted to focus on. Um, the first one was respect for all members in the community. Um, the second was social equity. And the third was transparency. So now I'm gonna make you guys chime in a little bit more. Um, that's, you know, concludes my kind of report back from 2020. Um, and so uh, I guess this slide should really say, what do we envision for 2021? Um, but so um, I guess we should discuss um, what we want for, what we wanna see in our neighborhood over the next year. Well, it's apparent that we will probably still be doing virtual meetings uh, until further notice. So with that in mind, um, I guess getting the word out to more people as to how to either call in and be engaged or um, sign in. What I have found out from some people is they don't have a way to do the video feed because they either don't have a iPhone or they don't have a camera or they don't know how to use it. So they're all uh, variations of ways that we probably need to think of to get more people involved. I, I'm particularly thinking of folks in my age group who are still actively involved or should be. Yeah. So I think that people can call in, you know, using any kind of phone, um, but maybe they don't know that they have that ability or Right, and that is something that I don't know if we need to make sure to emphasize and give them the specific number because I know the Zoom setup has multiple phone numbers. And if there's some way we can highlight the specific number they can use to call in. 
they don't need to use a Chicago or a New York phone number to call in. Mm -hmm. And I know at our Civic Association meeting, you know, I think there was a positive response. I don't know what the surveys have shown, but to the activities that were, uh, the Civic Association was able to have in spite of COVID got a very positive response and we should consider at least doing those again. I don't know if reaching out to Alan and about partnering with Ganther's Place for a garden tour since ours was good, but if we could once again reach out to them and see if they're planning on doing it. And if so, not, um, if so, doing it on the same weekend and the suggestion of moving it up a couple of weeks was something we were considering. Yeah, I would definitely like to see the garden tour happen again in 2021. Yeah. Um, I'm envisioning some new leadership. <laughs> um, yeah, so I started on as president in January of 2018, and then Ashley joined uh, a couple months later, and then Rachel joined a couple months later. Um, and then in 2019, uh, Kat joined as our treasurer, and then 2020, uh, Donna um, took Kat's place as our treasurer. So, um, you know, Ashley, Ashley, me and Rachel have been, you know, kind of leading um, for a couple of years now. And so uh, with Ashley, you know, planning to move out of the neighborhood and I'd like to step down as president, um, we will need to get some new, some new leadership. So, um, you know, how do I know we? You, I know you don't want to hear this, Liz, but in order to maintain some continuity, especially if Rachel is planning on stepping down, um, I would like to see you continue as president. And then in 2022, after there's a new VP for 2021, you can then move off, but then that will maintain leadership continuity. I don't think Rachel's planning to step down from her secretary position. Just as the uh, bylaws chair, which hopefully after Tuesday's meeting, you know, we got most of that done. Yeah. So I'm, I'm, I'm pretty sure I'm ready to step down. Um, to be honest, I really wasn't, I really didn't want to continue as president this past year. Um, but with COVID happening, I didn't really have time to lay any groundwork to find someone to take over. Um, and it's not that I don't enjoy doing the work I do. I just, I have other things I, I feel like I need to focus on in my personal life. And, um, and I, I definitely feel a lot of like anxiety about not doing enough <laughs> for the civic association. Um, a lot of times, you know, there's always more work to be done, but you know, I work full time and, um, and I have a personal life. And so, um, Three, three years has been a, has been a while <laughs> um, to put some of my own kind of goals that I 
had for right this time, you know, in my life kind of on hold. And I'm not, I don't think that, you know, anyone who takes over as president necessarily has to, you know, put their own personal life on hold. But I'm, you know, I'm just, uh, I'm an introvert. And, you know, kind of being the face of the Civic Association takes a lot of my time and energy. And like, you know, um, does, you know, cause me a bit of anxiety at times, just because a lot of times I'd prefer to just be at home by myself, <laughs> to be honest. <laughs> so not, and not, um, you know, have to get up in front of people and lead meetings. So um, I 100%, you know, want to continue to be active in the Civic Association. Um, I have no plans on disappearing. Um, I just want to have a different role. Um, maybe something that is more aligned with my, you know, personal interests. Um, so that's kind of how I feel. Um, but, you know, I don't think that I'll leave the civic high and dry, you know, I'm not, I'm not going to disappear at any point. So I'll still be around if, if no one wants to take over, but, um, if no one does end up taking over, you know, um, I may just be very limited in, you know, kind of organizing meetings. Um, but I don't, I don't know what else my, um, you know, I don't, I guess I wouldn't be very passionate about continuing to be the leader. So, <laughs> you know, commendable and I understand completely. Um, uh, I'm an extrovert. <laughs> so one of the things that I don't have a problem with is getting out there, but now that I'm retired, I have dis I make a conscientious choice as to how much I will be involved versus what I used to do when I worked. And um, the fact that you're still willing to stay with the Civic Association, but take maybe a lesser role. Thank you. So I guess my question becomes, where do we look for a president and a VP in light of the fact that we need to also expand membership. Because I think if we have more members, there's more of an opportunity to have a larger pool in which to spread the work around. Because I the garden tour. Yeah you and Ashley were running around putting in flags and getting everything pretty much organized. And um, if we have more participants in the Civic Association, that can be better managed. Yeah. I have a daughter who feels the same way. She's a behind the scenes person and to get out there and run a meeting or manage people sends her over the edge with anxiety. And so <laughs> I'm constantly yeah. talking to her off the ledge. <laughs> yeah, for some reason I'm a person that loves to, I don't know, volunteer or somehow finds myself volunteering for these roles, but um, I am a hundred percent introvert <laughs> and much, much prefer to be behind the scenes. But, um, you know, someone's got to step up sometimes and, um, but I, I have no intention. So our previous president before I took on was the president for nine years. And so I have no intention to, <laughs> follow, you know, kind of that, uh, that path. Um, and, you know, I think diversity is also important, you know, pe other people do things differently. And so um, it's good to mix up leadership and have other other people's methods, um, you know, for running. So running a or little organization like ours. So um, but yeah, to Donna's point, uh, membership is, uh, you know, 
upping our membership and our participation from residents is, is going to be, you know, one of the most important things to get new leaders. Um, now we have, based on what I calculated, we have about 23 paid members. Yes, 23 paid members. Yeah, and I think it's been hard. Like I know we have, you know, a lot of members who have kind of disappeared with COVID and going virtual. And so I don't know, trying to to figure out how to engage people um consistently now that we're virtual i know you know a lot of people come to events and meetings for the in-person interaction and the you know opportunity to get to know their neighbors and it's hard to be like you know join this virtual meeting <laughs> where um you're just going to be staring at a screen for a couple hours <laughs> so i'm not really sure um especially with winter how we kind of engage people in that manner. Um, I think like the garden tour was a great event, but um, can we do, I mean, is there anything we can do when the weather is not um, ideal? Well, virtual during winter would probably be our best option. Um, and depending on what the warm weather brings, I mean, at this point, I don't think most groups have much of an option simply because it's imperative that we follow the constraints to avoid having a super spreader event. Yeah. And it seems as though once we get past this period of time that um, I will still be doing Zoom. There are days when I, I'm on two different Zoom events per day at different times of the day. And if it's not me, it's my husband. And um, I think this is going to be our new normal <laughs> for the most part because it is convenient, people don't have to travel and it's just making sure that they're able to access it. And that's the biggest challenge I think anybody has is making sure that everybody has access. Mm -hmm. To Donna's point, I, I like the idea of even when we are able to have meetings in person again, to have some sort of virtual option in addition to being in person. I like now that we have the YouTube channel. So if there's a way to, you know, live stream to YouTube, even if we don't want to have the Zoom membership once the uh, pandemic is, you know, a little bit more controlled, uh, I think that would encourage the, uh, you know, addition of participation, even if you can't join in person. As someone who joined the Civic Association, during the pandemic, I've never been to an in-person meeting. Um, it's been uh, nice to have, I think it would be nice to continue that option. And Becca, to be honest, because the first Tuesday of the month falls during my husband's stroke support um, meetings, which are very important to both of us to attend, virtual has allowed us to allow me to be a part of the civic association meeting and him to do the stroke support because they're doing that virtually. So he's sitting in one part of the room on stroke support and I'm in another part of the room during uh, civic association. So being able to provide both options at the same time is great. And if it's YouTube, that's how I attend church on Sundays. 
my church does it on YouTube. They have a YouTube channel. I also think that um, <clears throat> a litter cleanup would be a, a decent socially distant activity, um, even in the winter, because you're all bundled up anyway. Um, I guess the hardest part would just be the initial meeting to, you know, grab supplies and, and figure out a plan. I haven't participated in one before, but it seems like it could um, lend itself well to COVID friendly policy. Uh, there was one that was held this fall that one of our residents organized and the supplies were all dropped off at Cossack Street Garden. And there were, I know I saw five people, including myself, and I understand there were others who came later or earlier and participated in it. And I was like, we just took streets and started cleaning up. So we were all socially distanced with the mask on and what have you, walking around with our pickers and our bags and our gloves. And then we returned all the bags to the central location at Cossack Street Gardens. And um, the person who organized it, I've been trying to get her to come to civic association meetings because she lives in the area. So I plan on reaching out to her to become a member in 2021. Yeah, so I did see after that happened, you know, the post on next door and I, I vaguely remember, I mean, I, I looked up the organization that supplied the supplies at the time, but I can't remember what organization it was. Um, the reason we hadn't done any litter cleanups in 2020 is that Keep Columbus Beautiful, who normally supplies the bags and the pickers and the gloves and everything, um, were not, they were not supporting any group litter cleanup efforts. Um, so yeah, so, so something to think about, um, I guess is, you know, where we would get the supplies from. Um, I don't know. I think it's my impression right now is that that litter cleanup was like a one-off event that an organization was supporting, but not a consistent. Um, but I'm not 100% on that because I, I honestly can't remember the details right now. I think you're right. Um, but it was, I mean, they provided everything that Keep Columbus Beautiful would have provided. And by the way, Sherry Palmer, who is, uh, who was the director, the coordinator, I should say, of that program, recently retired. So I don't know who the, her replacement is. Yeah, I did, I did hear that, that she um, retired. Mm -hmm. And she's already talking about getting involved in some other projects on the south side and I plan on staying on top of her to get more involved in the civic association as well. Great. Seeing as how she's my neighbor so. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Another thing. Um, oh go ahead. Oh, I was just going to say that another thing that I've been keeping an eye on is the Columbus uh, Division of Forestry, like the, the official plan for the, you know, improving the tree canopy throughout the city. Um, they haven't published an update in a while, but I am occasionally doing research and I would like to see some sort of perhaps Arbor Day activity and I don't know, some sort of outreach about improving the tree canopy in the neighborhood and figuring out if there are any areas that the city could provide trees. Um, they only provide trees in like designated uh, spots. It's usually like between the street and the sidewalk. Um, it's, they don't yeah, really- the tree Yeah, yeah. 
So figuring out some way to, to increase trees in the neighborhood, whether it's an Arbor Day activity or through the city or through that division of forestry master plan, whatever it is. Um, I'm, I'm trying to keep an eye on it and I don't think they've published anything recently. Yeah, the, um, the right of way for that, for a lot of the homes in this area, there isn't that right of way, unfortunately. I think when, as you go further east though, you see more opportunity for trees to um, be planted. But I agree that would be good. Or even keeping track of the city trees in our neighborhood that have died and need replacing, um, even if we can't, if we don't have more opportunities to plant new trees in new locations, but just making sure mm -hmm. that our current trees are healthy. I know that a huge tree on Carpenter was uh, cut down. Now I think because the uh, tree was impacting the foundation of the house, plus Carpenter um, still has brick streets, which is rare for this part of the south side. And the roots had gone under the brick on the streets. So it came down and they had an arborist who came out and cut it down and it was a huge tree. It had to have been there since this area was developed. But yes, keeping track of healthy trees that are in the community, that would be, it would be good to do a walk through to find out where these trees are and this, their status. Because I know the developer who put the um, apartments a couple of doors down the way, cut down two trees in order to do that. So, did they plant a new tree after they finished building the built house? They are going to put a tree in the back. It has not mm -hmm. yet been planted, it's still sitting in the pot. Um, <laughs> at this point, it has blown over more than it has, you know, done any growing. But chances are, unless they get it in the ground soon, they're going to have to wait till spring to get it in. Probably. I that don't could be a fun compliance issue if you don't get one in though. Pardon me? Um, that's uh, required by zoning for their house that they built. So that, that could be something that could be brought up against them over the next year if they don't well, plant one. It's I can look out my window and it's still sitting in the pot. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> so the I, intention I, is there. The wind is still up in the air. Mm -hmm. But Arbor Day is generally in June. Is that correct, Becca? I can't remember because I get it confused with Earth Day, which is in April. Oh, I don't know. They are. April 22nd, my daughter's birthday is Earth Day. I know that. <laughs> nice. April 30th of next it year. April 30th. Okay. So both April. So some sort of April environmental activity for next year could be about. If we could just get people to recycle, I'd be happy. Yeah, why doesn't the city provide a recycling bin for every address? I've always had requested. Have to request it. Right. Why don't they just have it at the same time as the trash? Like just guaranteed everybody. Two different contracts. One is the trash is city, and they contract with Rumpke to do the um, recycling. Having lived in Columbus, uh, several years ago when they started the recycling program, uh, getting people to 
by Intuit. And early on, the city was handling recycling and they weren't doing it very effectively. Um, what they found out was that if you put your recycling out separately, it was still winding up in the landfill mm -hmm. when the city did it. So they went ahead and Rumpke has pretty much cornered the market because when I lived in Delaware County, they were the ones who handled uh, recycling and they did it separately from trash pickup, so. So would I contact Rumpke if I wanted to encourage them to do composting? Because they already pick up yard waste, but they don't pick up food waste. And I feel like that's a giant missed opportunity. Uh, you can find out if they will do that. I don't know if that's something that- They don't they currently, do. but I want them to. Yeah, that would be good. The composting is handled by the city and they don't pick it up. I think you have to take it to them, to their facility out there on South High Street. And there's like a private option, right? For compost pickup. Depends on the zip code. Mm. Yeah. Is that yeah, Hillary, you're doing stuff on Grandview. Yeah. Can just drop off that whole field and look market. Yeah, so I do one in my backyard, but mm -hmm. it fills up so quickly. And I remember mm -hmm. they did a, um, a study about how much food waste is in our landfills and all of the methane that that's creating. And it seems like the obvious solution is to just have food composting, trash, and recycling. I would agree. But to be honest, the suburbs do a better job than the city. Mm -hmm. It's easier to deal with less than 50,000 people than 250,000 people. Yeah. 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 And I know that uh, Comtill is there on South High Street, Route 23, oh. in the city, where that you can go and get composted mm -hmm. uh, material for your gardens. Mm -hmm. But yeah. yeah. Jackson Pike. Yep, that's Comtill. Hmm. And it's right down there. That's just like um, used paint. There is a place to recycle that is located off of Cleveland Avenue and Fifth. And I know that when uh, we did some painting, I took my half used cans or used cans that were empty to a location. Now you have to pay, but um, still it's better than throwing them in the trash can. And I know that um, Rumpke won't recycle that. You can throw it in the trash cans if it's already dried out. But even still, I'd rather not do that. I'd rather take it to a place where they can properly dispose of it. But I get so upset with the fact that people aren't recycling because to me, it's easy to just separate it. I'm always excited when I'm driving through the neighborhood and I see the blue cans sitting out. I think at one point, like five years ago, the city actually collected a lot of the blue cans that were just sitting in the alleys because part of the recycling program um, 
you're supposed to take the blue can back into your garage or designated space on your property after uh, the collection date. And so um, I remember the city came through and I, I mean, I, I assumed it was the city cause it wasn't like, you know, it was like an operation came through and collected a bunch of the blue cans that had just been left in the alley. I was a new homeowner then. I didn't realize I had to bring my blue cans in and I had two and they were both gone. So. <laughs> um, but they replaced it, no charge. Um, but I remember when that happened, they came through a lot of the alleys and took a lot of them. Um, so. I know in our alleys, I've seen them filled with various things that are not recycling so our alley is getting better but uh yeah if any of the green bins overflow the natural next step is to put it in the blue bin whether or not it's recyclable don't uh, get me started on the uh 300 gallon cans i wish we could get rid of those because they're more of a hassle and i have filed complaints with 311 because construction materials have been left in the green cans and with a lot of um, renovating and building going on just in this little square block area. It's crazy. And then we do have a neighbor down the street who's a bit challenged and every now and then he gets cited um, for code violations with too much trash on his porch. So in order to avoid the fine, he twice a year cleans his porch and overflows the can. I mean, he puts everything in there. And uh, so I become the 311 police because he'll fill up all the cans up and down the alley and those of us can't even, who have just regular trash cannot even put our trash in there. So it's, I wish they'd get rid of the 300 gallon cans, to be honest with you. So um, we've gone over, you know, just, just over an hour at this point. Um, I'm having some technical issues. My um, phone is probably gonna die. Um, so um, I'm, uh, you know, if, if you would like to continue the discussion, um, I'll, I might just drop off, but I've also, um, you know, wanted to just review the the dates or make you you know aware of the that like working draft um, with dates that I sent out for the monthly membership meeting schedule the monthly executive board meeting schedule um, civic uh, partner events and um, and any feedback you have you know feel free to email me or include it in that survey if you haven't completed it already. Um, so, um, I took some notes on, you know, what we've discussed in this PowerPoint and, um, if we want to talk about other, um, sorry, I guess I'm, I, we can just continue the discussion, um, but um, maybe in your own time, you can just look through those dates and make sure that everything looks okay and then get any feedback back to me about it. And we can, um, I know that the, e the executive board will, will discuss more at our uh, meeting at the end of the month. And um, I also um, forgot to chime in and mention that I just, I think getting a website is also a big, uh, would be a good step for us to have information out there for residents. Um, that's not Facebook or email, and it's like a consistent place that they can go to get information, so. And Liz, I did forward the executive board two examples of membership forms that I received. Uh, I spoke to Brenda, who's the president of 
Schumacher Place, and she directed me to their website, and I pulled off their membership form. And then I got the one from Sharon Woods because I have a friend who's active in that civic association. So I forwarded those to the executive board for us to consider at the end of the month how we want to construct our membership form. The question about address verification, whoever wants to join can. Once they put their address on it, we know whether or not they are within our catchment area for Southern Orchard, so. Yeah, thank you for sending uh, those examples over. Um, Liz, I just have a real quick thing, uh, looking at the monthly meetings, um, isn't 11-2 election day? Yeah, so... What are we looking at? 11-2. Yeah, so I wasn't really sure. I don't, I like Googled a little bit, but... Um, my internet's not working right now, so... Um, yeah, so I guess if we want to move that meeting again. I actually have to head to another meeting, so I will check all check in with you all later. All right, Thank thanks for joining. Yeah, um, yeah. Um, do you know if yeah, there's a primary? What did you say, Liz? Will there be a primary election as well in 2021? I don't think there'll be a primary. There may be issues that are on the ballot. I don't, I know that there are no national, federal, elections, but there might be state. The city council too. Because I Attica know it's timed in that there's city council as well. Okay. So mm -hmm. we may have to move that to the to the ninth of uh, November. Would there be a city council primary then? Yeah there'll be there'll be primaries in May. You can find the dates online too. Couldn't find them. Oh, okay. <clears throat> well, I guess you're running for city council. No. God, no. <laughs> Not yet. <laughs> no. Okay, so I'll adjust those dates. Thank you. Well, well what will likely happen, it's, it's yet to be determined. It's we're kind of waiting to see if Mitch Brown and Priscilla Tyson will leave their seats. Typically, this is about the time when a city council members, uh, the way they kind of often operate is they'll either decide to run for office, although Mitch Brown and Priscilla Tyson are pretty much capped out. There's really not anywhere else for them to go. So typically they'll step down now. And then uh, by law, city council is required to fill their position. So they'll appoint two new city council members. And then by the time the primary comes around, they're already essentially an incumbent. So usually mm -hmm. it's around it's around December, January at least as far as our city council goes, that you'll it'll kind of decide what it'll look like. It's possible they may run for re-election, but I think their city council's changed a little bit and they're kind of the old guard. So it's likely they probably won't won't come be coming back, but we shall Fair see. Enough. Regardless, they'll have they'll have to run for re-election. They're up in 2021, so they'll definitely be a primary in May. Well, I just read, because um, I get her emails, 
that uh, Congresswoman Joyce Beatty was just recently selected to be the chair of the Congressional Black Caucus. Yep. So that is a powerful um, committee in Congress and the fact that our own representative will be chairing that is she's to be commended. So it's a big deal. Yes. All right. Um, I'm going to have to jump off. My phone's at 1%, so I might get cut off. <laughs> I got it plugged in, but it doesn't seem like it's charging fast enough. So <laughs> Thanks. thank well, you guys for thank joining. You. Yeah, this is really no problem. And I'll see you at the end of the month. All right. Sounds good. And I'll Bye -bye. have some survey results at that time. Great. Cool. Okay. All right. Have a great day. Yeah. Bye, guys. Bye. Bye.